Hi, I'm Pratik, and in this video, we're going to be looking at the MFDS examination. Remember, if you want thorough revision notes, exam cheat sheets, CPD, along with a huge bank of exam style questions and guidelines, head over to examadental.com. We also have expert one-to-one -one mentoring sessions in order to help you ace those interviews and exams. The MFDS is a diploma for the membership of the Faculty of Dental Surgery. It is an exam that is currently sat across three different Royal Colleges. The Royal College of Edinburgh, the Royal College of England, and the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow. It is an internationally recognised qualification that is quite important for career progression. Before we go on, it's important to note that the content in this video is correct at the time of recording. There are some important changes coming to the MFDS in Autumn 2026, and I'll be touching on these towards the end of the video, so please make sure to keep watching. Through the MFDS, an individual is demonstrating a level of competence in basic postgraduate training. The majority of people who do the MFDS typically do this quite soon after graduating, and in fact, the syllabus and the curriculum for the MFDS is very closely aligned to dental foundation training. If you pass the MFDS, then you'll be affiliated with one of the three Royal Colleges. After reducing in popularity, the MFDS is becoming more and more important, particularly for career progression. For example, it helps score marks for specialty training applications on your self-assessment criteria. Any qualified dentist can sit the MFDS after their first year of dentistry. And in fact, the MFDS isn't just sat in the UK. You can sit the exam internationally at various testing centres, all of which are listed on the Royal College websites. All the Royal College websites and any other important resources, including links at the Examinental website, will be in the description below this video. Like many exams, the MFDS is made up of two parts. Part one is a written exam made up of single best answer questions. And between the Royal Colleges, the exam varies slightly. The Scottish Colleges, i.e. Glasgow and Edinburgh, share the same exam, where they have 180 single best answer questions that are sat within three hours. The Royal College of England has 150 single best answer questions that sat over three hours. The best way to think about the syllabus for this exam currently is that it closely aligns to the dental final exam that you would do. So the same themes and topics that would come up during a revision for the dentistry finals are probably the same types of things you need to be thinking about for your MFDS part one currently. Ultimately, the Royal College that you sit part one with doesn't really have a bearing on your affiliation at the end of your MFDS. It is the college that you sit your MFDS part two with that will determine which college you're affiliated with. Having said that, even after you become affiliated with the college, you can move your membership if necessary. In the MFDS part one, each question is equally weighted and each question is worth one mark. There is currently no negative marking in the MFDS part one. Some of the themes and topics that you may want to consider as part of your revision include oral surgery, oral medicine, restoration of teeth, ethical principles and even clinical governance topics. We've got quite a lengthy list of revision topics that you may want to consider over on the Examinental website. The part two exam is an objective structured clinical examination, i.e. an OSCE. Essentially, with part one, you're being tested on your regurgitation of knowledge. Have you learned that theory that is required for the exam? In part two, you're being tested on three things, your level of knowledge, your application of knowledge, and also your communication skills. Essentially, the Royal Colleges are taking these three factors and seeing whether you can apply them to day-to-day -day scenarios that you'd be presented with in clinic. Some of the scenarios to think about include patients with recurrent oral ulceration, patients who are on bisphosphonates, and patients with ill-fitting dentures. These are common scenarios that we would come across in our day-to-day -day clinics. Again, the structure of the part two exam varies between the colleges. The Scottish colleges tend to have 10 OSCE stations, along with a few rest stations. And these stations are all patient-based communication stations. The Royal College of England tends to have around 14 stations, of which roughly 11 stations are actually examined. Along with this, the Royal College of England also likes to have a couple of VIVA stations. So stations where you're directly interacting with the examiner, dentist to dentist. These are prime situations where you can use all the jargon and all the technical terms that you want to in order to demonstrate your knowledge to the examiners. Once again, all the stations are equally weighted. So if you do happen to not do so well on a particular station, it's important to try and forget about that station as you progress through the exam. That way you can focus at the station on hand and do your best in that particular scenario. There is a five year time frame between part one and part two. So you have a limit in which you can sit both parts. However, between part one and part two, you also require 12 months of clinical work. If you are unfortunate to fail one of these exams, the current guidance is that you can sit part one up to six times 
and part two up to four times. Of course, cost is a very important factor when it comes to any dental examination. The costs vary between the Royal Colleges, and again, these are correct at the time of recording. The Royal College of England charges £535 for part one, whereas the Scottish Colleges charge £570 for part one. For part two, the Royal College of England charges £700, whereas again, the Scottish Colleges are slightly more expensive at £770. If you're wanting to book the examination, you need to head over to the Royal College websites. Again, these are linked in the description below. Ensure you meet the required criteria in order to sit part one or part two and fill the application form available on the website. It's very important that you use the correct resources to help prepare for your part one and part two examination. Over at the Examinental website, we have hundreds of questions to help you prepare for your MFDS part one. We also have a huge range of OSCEs with model answers to help you prepare for MFDS part two. So make sure to check these out. Along with this, there are a couple of books that we'd recommend. The first one is the single best answer questions for dentistry, which I've written myself. However, a lot of these questions are now available on the Examinental website. There is also the past test books, which there are a range of books available. Although they're slightly older, their content is still extremely relevant and is a useful way to prepare. It's also important to emphasize that for the part two exam, I think it's very important that you have someone to practice with, whether that is a colleague, whether it's a family member or a friend. If you're practicing with a colleague, it's good because you can practice and ensure that your clinical knowledge is correct for those particular scenarios. The advantage for practicing with someone who is not dental is that you can practice those communication skills and ensure that you're carrying out explanations in a jargon-free way that they can understand. At Examine Dental, we also provide one-to-one -one tutoring for your MFDS part two exam, so we can help guide you through this if required. Now for the big changes in the MFDS coming in autumn 2026, it looks like the MFDS exam is now going to become a tri-collegiate exam, so all three Royal Colleges will share the same exam compared to the current setup. It also seems as though the MFDS Part 2 will start shifting towards a greater emphasis on the non-technical skills, so those Viva type scenarios compared to simply patient-based, communication-based scenarios. And finally, it will soon be required that you pass the MFDS if you want to sit a specialty examination. So this will apply if you want to sit a specialty examination either through a specialty training pathway or an alternative route, you must have the MFDS in order to sit it. So in this video, we've looked at the MFDS examination. We've looked at the Royal Colleges and the structure of part one and part two, along with some important resources to help you prepare for these examinations. And finally, we touched upon the changes that are coming to the MFDS exam in 2026. I hope you find this video useful. If you did, please make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And until the next video, take care.